One day, a mother sent her 15-year-old son to go to the well to fetch water. So he picked up his wheelbarrow, put inside his three 20-litre jerrycans, and he was ready to go. He started his journey. The well was about two and a half miles away from his home. And it was a really hot day, so on his way to his well, he could feel the, you know, he could feel the sun beat against his skin. He finally got to the well and filled up the jerrycans and put them onto his wheelbarrow and started to make his way. He had only walked half a mile when it started raining. All of a sudden, his flip-flops were full of mud and he was struggling to walk. He was finding it harder to walk, so he decided, you know what, I'm going to empty out you know, half of these jerrycans and I'm, instead of going with 60 litres, I'm going to go with 30 litres. So he kept on pushing and the rain got even harder and he could feel the raindrops beat mercilessly against his skin, but he kept on pushing, he didn't give up until eventually he got back home. And his mother asked him, why didn't you just leave everything behind and come back home? He replied, you sent me to get water, isn't it? That child was me. My name is Isfah Masoke. I'm a community leader and a sick form student from Croydon, South London. What's your story? And how are you using it to create positive change in the world? The title of, today's, of my talk today is The Impact of Storytelling. I believe that stories not only have the power to change your impact on the people around you, your perception of the people around you, but also your view on the entire world. There's no better way to explain this than by demonstrating. But before I start, I want to make two main points in my talk. One, immigrants have something to offer. And two, people who face challenges can still change the world. My parents migrated um, from the UK to Uganda during the early 90s. They, when, they, when they got here, they travelled around London for a bit and eventually settled down in Croydon, in South London. And they got married and they had me shortly after. I'm not quite sure how much I weighed, but by the looks of it, I probably wasn't that heavy. Um, growing up for me was particularly difficult. This was because I faced an identity crisis. When I was at home, my parents would emphasise African culture and the importance of listening, respecting authority without question. But when I was at school, it was more British culture, being more open to the world, expressing your views. I ended up having two very extreme personalities, and this damaged my self-esteem. I was a very shy boy. I didn't have many friends. Moving on to high school, things didn't get any better. I still wasn't doing well at school. I was still extremely shy. And I remember my mum coming back from parents' evening one day, and she said, son, what's wrong with you? You don't listen in class, you don't do anything right, but still you insist on distracting other kids. What is wrong with you? Unfortunately, from there, things got even worse. I started to have panic attacks. There was one time I had a panic attack on the bus, but luckily one of my friends was there to help me. He took me to the local clinic and I managed to recover. At that moment, something life-changing happened. My mother decided to take me and my little brothers to Uganda. Uganda was, uh, we lived there for four years and it was the best learning experience I've had in my whole life. I got to see what Africa is all about. Diverse, yet uniting in togetherness. The first school I went to pulled me back two academic years. The, the, the one after that pulled me back three academic years. I was shocked, I was confused. I thought I was stupid. Instead of sitting down and crying, I decided to step up my game, to start getting serious with my studies. And the last one and a half years, I went to an uh, international school where I did my IGCSEs. And overall, my experience of Uganda it was very unique. Because what I saw, I saw people, people who couldn't afford to even eat twice a day. People who didn't ha even have a mattress to sleep on but yet they were happy and they were contented with their life. I was confused. How? You don't even have a mattress to sleep on at night. What's making you so happy? That showed me how much I'd taken for granted when I was living here. Another moment, the summer of 2011, there were riots here in the UK, throughout the UK, and in London as well. I had to watch them on TV. I was in Uganda at the time. 
and watching my hometown being burnt down in flames, it made me angry. And this is the first time I actually wanted to change something. But what was I going to do? I was thousands of miles away. What was I going to do? I waited. And in June 2012, when I finally came back, I decided it's time for action. I'm going to do something now. I decided to make podcasts. I spoke about the issues that I felt affected young people. And they got pretty popular throughout the summer. Got a few friends to listen to them. That's pretty nice. <laughs> um, I felt like a celebrity. Um, <laughs> so, you know, going on to college, I, I discovered community organising, the power of people, the power of relationships. And I, got, I started to get involved in a lot of campaigns in my college and outside my college. I got, in camp I got involved in campaigns to do with jobs, to do with immigration, to do with wages, and this motivated me to do even more. And, you know, towards the end of 2013, I, was, I won the award for Young Leader of the Year 2013, which is a really great achievement. I got to meet Boris Johnson, the Mayor of London, and represent South London, which was also a great achievement. But just like anybody else, I live my life by principles. I have a simple theory, you don't have to believe it, but I call it the spark theory. Reaching your full potential shouldn't be limited on what you can do, but also how you can be the spark to ignite change in others around you. Going back to my two main points, immigrants have something to offer. There's so much adversity and exclusion surrounding immigrants. When they come here, they're seen as outcasts. Also, people who face challenges can change the world, which is a perfect example of my life. I face very many challenges, and I'm sure each and every one of you have faced challenges in your life as well. But I want to end this with a question. What are you doing to create change in your life?